Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whoa! Will the players save the townspeople? Will they find their way out of the darkness and stop from being completely lost? Will the DM learn how to both implement world building and learn how to DM at the same time? Um, this is session one of the Dragon Lads campaign diary. I am going to do this series of videos where I talk about the story first and then I talk about what I learned as a DM afterward and hopefully we'll be able to stay on focus. I will be able to stay on topic um, and that kind of thing. Okay. After the Lost Minds of Fandelver, the party went their separate ways, but there was something found in the waters of the cave. There was a secret map hidden in the Lost Minds of Fandelver that was pointing towards something else with a big star marked on the map in the water. And so the players tried going into the water, but it did something very strange. It caused them to fall asleep and they woke up on the shores of Neverwinter, the city of Neverwinter. Now, um, the players from that can the, the, the characters from that game don't factor into this um, campaign, but uh, some of the players stuck around, so some of them knew uh, a little bit about this. Um, the characters uh, were recruited by a wizard by the name of Daogon. He was an, a half elf, uh, no, a high elf uh, wizard, Daogon, um, part of the Zentarum Guild, um, who also had Halia from the town of Fandelver, um, Fandolin, town of Fandolin, um, who was also part of the Zentarum Guild. Uh, basic, basically, after the events of the Lost Mine of Fandelver, if you've never played that uh, starter set um, module, it's a lot of fun. It was my first DMing experience ever, and this story here is my second. And last so far. Hopefully there'll be more. Um, Halia is part of a guild called the Zentarum. They're kind of shady. They do what it takes to get power, money, etc. Use muscle, hire people, underlings, that kind of thing. And uh, it, at least in my version of uh, Van Deller, uh, Halia, who is the dwarven um, female uh, miners guild master, um, master of the miners guild, um, and she was working with this, uh, also with the Zentarum Guild, though they didn't really factor into my campaign, but she had ties with this guy named Daugan, and, uh, she basically lost, um, as a result of the events of Fandelver, lost, uh, her, her, her position as the, uh, the guild, the Miner's Guildmaster. The Miner's Guildmaster, I made it, that person is kind of like the head of this town of Fandelin, and, um, she kind of ran the place a little bit and then because uh she was um she opposed the the party that ended up finding the lost mine yes spoiler alert there's there's a lost mine in the lost mine of Fandelver that can be found and uh Halia opposed them and because of that she tried to rise she part of that she was to her trying to rally up the guild ma the the miners guild people against the party and when she ended up being wrong as it were when it, she ended up being uh put down she lost her position and lost all of her sway and so she kind of reached out to a contact this wizard named Dalgun, and there was rumors going around that the people who had originally gone into the mine had found some secret way to teleport from point A to point B, to the, from the mines to Fandelver, and Dalgon wanted it investigated. Nobody else had been able to recreate it yet, and uh, Halia um, figured, after questioning certain folks and asking around, she figured she knew how to recreate it, and so she was going to try to win back some prestige, try to get, get kind of get back into the Zentarum's favor as well. Um, because uh, they didn't uh, think highly of her after she was kind of worthless to them. And so, um, unbeknownst to our characters, this uh, was all happening behind the scenes. So, the 
um, impetus of the story is them looking for a job, looking for some money, and they found a contact, a halfling with some bad teeth, met them at a tavern, got them all together, and said that they're going on an expedition. I believe they were all going to be paid 50 gold apiece to do a simple expedition that would go from point A to point B, that's all there was to it, and um, they would get the money and, and Bob's your uncle. Bob was not their uncle. Um, one of the characters, a half-elf, but high-elf, a high elf wizard, another high elf wizard, by the name of Eris, who had spent most of his life studying in a temple. Um, he, his uncle is Dalgon, and uh, uh, so Dalgon uh, used the halfling as the, the go-between to get some, some people, some guinea pigs, some muscle, and um, to do this, this trek, to, 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 to check out this teleportation thing. And... Uh, Eris, being his nephew, he figured he could use him as well, that he wanted somebody with a bit of magical skill and, uh, and knew of this nephew of his that had never really done anything and he could probably talk him into doing it. And so uh, I think he offered to pay him like 25 gold, I believe, because they weren't all being offered the same amounts. Of course, they talked to each other later and that became a bit of a, a fun uh, problem for them to try to figure out. I think uh, somebody ended up getting the right more as a result of it. Anyway. Um, so we fast forward the, f this, this story, like we, we kind of skipped to them going straight into the, the mines because Halia knew where it was. They went to, they went to, to Fandolin, they met Halia. Halia was able to, to sing a song that I had used in the previous, um, campaign that kind of delighted the players who were returning. Um, the players who were returning are my nephew Cyril and my sister Rachel. Uh, Rachel was playing a n gnomish... Uh, druid by the name of Spiffy, and Cyril was playing a goblin or gremlin, depending on how we wanted to look at him. He, he was a, he's a goblin uh, by the name of the Imp. He is called the Imp, and he is a ranger rogue. He did some uh, multi-classing. And uh, Spiffy and uh, the Imp knew each other uh, from previous. I won't get into that right now because it's getting really long. Um, uh, and then there were two other characters, uh, Keita and is played by Cory. The Keita is a paladin, human paladin, and then there is a human sorcerer who we haven't met yet. Okay, um, and I, I also just really want, no, I'll get to that later. Okay, okay. <laughs> the party gets to the caves. They find their way through because the miners have started using this place and have been clearing out some of the, a lot of the dangers. Um, so they, there was, I believe, some random chance of them meeting something, but then they got through fine. They got to the water. There was no monsters there yet. And uh, Dalgon basically told them, okay, here's the water. You guys got to go for a swim. And... I don't remember if any of them jumped in right away. They were all quite hesitant. I think the first person to go in might have been uh, Keita. Keita was kind of is is a typical kind of brave, gusto hero. Wants to do the brave, courageous thing and have an awesome time as a hero. Good paladin. Um, the imp was asking for more money because he had spent a lot of his time as kind of an under. Well, he he'd spent his time as kind of a mercenary, also as a warlord, also as a slave, I believe. Um, and so he was kind of doing that. Spiffy had a lot of trauma, so she was probably kind of holding back and trying to figure out what the heck was going on that she was dealing with as well. And uh, Eris was just generally just kind of being inquisitive. Eris might have been the first one to go in. Um, hopefully the players, if they watch this, they will put some comments down below if they remember. I went over my notes before doing these videos and honestly they're a mess. There's not a ton of helpful stuff in there. I was mostly just writing down ideas for what I could use in the next session, which most of those were never used. Okay. I said I was going to get to that stuff after the story uh, of the session. Okay. So the session goes like the that somebody jumps in and the only thing that happens is they start to feel sleepy and it's not like this water is just some shallow pool this is um and uh, the wave echo cave lake these are waves that are actually moving in from uh, another water source that are pushing up against the this wall they had to go down i think 20 feet to get to the water um they may have had a rope tied around them uh to try to be safe 
and they're starting to fall asleep uh, in this water. There's this magical presence that's doing that, and they have to either choose to let go and let themselves go unconscious or to get out of the water. And um, eventually somebody does, and they don't come back up. I mean, it's, it's deep, it's deep water. They had no idea where he went, he or she. And, um, uh, and then Dalgon is just like, okay, everybody in the water, keep going, let's go, let's make, get this, get the move on. And there's some struggling. Eventually, Halia and him, I believe, managed to push or persuade by force everybody into the water. And then Dalgon wants to get Halia in the water and goes to push her. I believe he succeeds. And that's how they all got transported. And I'm going to read the script of what came next. All your senses are fully alert and you feel more alive than you've ever felt before. But your eyes see nothing but darkness, darkness in every direction, floating free, not just because of the water, but weightlessness and a great sucking sound, like that of a straw, and the feeling of the water drawing you toward the sound, and the water level going down. In the distance, a red, orange, white-hot glow in the shape of an enormous belly. Watch as the glow shoots out in a small stream, and you hear spitting sounds, as an ancient dragon's head comes to light. It is shooting the water out of its mouth, and the water shines and glimmers as it disperses into droplets. The droplets soar out into blackness until they are so far away that you no longer can see them moving, but can still see their white glow. In the light, you can make out the entire enormously enormous shape of the ancient white and gold dragon floating in space. It sucks up more water and you get pulled further toward it. The dragon stops and rears back up, and you stare up into its enormous gleaming eyes. One is brown, the other is green. It begins blowing the water out of its mouth, but cups its arms and catches the water, letting it build and forming into a sphere. The dragon takes a big, gasping breath and then blows on it again. Water jets out of the way of air, leaving behind rocks. Next, the dragon breathes fire and the rocks fuse together and make a perfect sphere. The dragon looks down and begins to draw up the rest of the water. And your sight is clouded over by the rushing water as you are rapidly tumbled ahead. Okay, I think the most significant thing about uh, session one was just the way that we we got together through an app called Meetup, and uh, three members had never met me or the other two members before. Um, so there is Eris, played by Gerald, um, and there Eris is the high, is the high elf wizard, and. Uh, Eris was the first one that we met because we set up the meetup and we were like, okay, um, whoever's interested in D&D &D and wants to just risk joining up with a group that's got a new DM who's trying out his own world building thing, which is going to be a little different from the usual stuff, um, just come on down and we'll, we'll start this meetup. And we had two, extra, two open slots and those were filled up like within hours because apparently there's not enough DMs in my city, in Winnipeg. And uh, um, Gerald was interested, but he didn't make the slots. And so he had just sent us like a message and I was like, yeah, okay, buddy. But you know, we're probably, you know, we're probably never gonna meet up because we got the people we need already. So thanks for your interest. And <laughs> sorry, Gerald. Um, uh, we, we got together at uh, Game Night Games, the uh, board game store, and uh, we're waiting there and nobody shows up and I'm messaging people and I think one guy had said, oh, sorry, I can't make it after all. And the other guy was just not responding. And I think that was actually Kane, who I'll get to in a moment. But um, anyway, I messaged Gerald and I'm like, hey, Gerald, you still want to join in on this? And uh, he messaged back right away and he just heads right on down. And I'm like, wow, that was fast. 
Good for you, man. You were, and I think it was, I think I had, like was talking about it with uh, one of the other two members, the other two members being my nephew, Cyril, and my sister, Rachel. And Rachel was like, well, we should take the people that are eager, that have like enthusiasm to do this or something along those lines. And uh, Gerald is obviously one of them. And, uh, and then we got him and we, we made some, we made sure everyone kind of had characters. Uh, er Gerald took Eris um, from the pile of pre-made characters from Wizards, from the, the starter set, um, the High Elf Wizard character. And he got the name through a name generator, much like I was using for another NPC character. And so we just kind of winged it and got, got, got things going. Um, and then we actually started in the next session where we got together. And we were going to go back to the same board game store. But lo and behold, when we got there, I got there early to set up and there was there's no free room whatsoever and uh, and I'm in a panic I'm trying to call and message people and stuff and Gerald says hey why doesn't everybody come to my place and I'm like well that wouldn't have been my first option because it just seems risky just with complete strangers I'm like we're putting him out um, we're putting our trust in, in his hands as well he's putting his, his trust in our hands um, of his place and everything and uh, uh, it just worked out. It just worked out. We got both Kane and Corey together with Gerald at Gerald's place. And so there was the five of us. I originally had only wanted to have, uh, oh, sorry, the six of us, um, I believe. And I only originally wanted to have four players because I'm like, I'm a new DM, can't have too many players, let's limit this. And uh, it just, it all worked out great. And I just wanted to say that if you are trying to get your session going, your party going, if you're trying to keep your, your d d group going and, and having a hard time getting to together, um, a little bit of perse perseverance can definitely pay off. And meeting complete strangers apparently can work through, uh, through even through apps like, uh, like Meetup. And uh, um, I think it blows my mind completely that, especially a person like Kane, would just... Um, having never played D&D before in his life would put his trust in my hands as like, okay, show me how to play. Well, you know, I'm jumping into feet first into your own homebrew world here and hopefully this will work well. And I'm like, oh boy, buddy. Uh, oh man, I am going to let you down so hard. <laughs> oh, is what I was worried, of course. But uh, it worked out great. We got through the whole thing. We got through the whole campaign in the end, as you shall see if you keep watching these videos. Um, uh, <clears throat> we didn't have Cora's character in yet, but Kane was playing Keita the Paladin. Great Paladin character. Um, uh, Gerald playing Eris the Wizard. And my nephew Cyril uh, playing the Imp, the Goblin Rogue Ranger. I don't remember which one he started out with, but he multiclassed into both. And... Um, uh, my sister Rachel, the uh, gnomish druid named Spiffy. So we had of the characters, there's Spiffy the druid, the imp, the rogue ranger, um, Eris the wizard, and Keita the paladin. They, those were the group that got together in the tavern, and uh, those are the group that went through the water and was some crazy magical transportation thing to another world happened. Um, I, uh, let's see, what can I say about the campaign? I threw Halia in there as a, as, you know, if I need an idea for an NPC, stealing ideas, stealing NPCs from other modules works great for me. And I, I like the idea of tying it in. I thought, uh, uh, perhaps that the characters from my Lost Minds of Phandelver campaign might keep going and do my, uh, my layoff campaign, Heart of the Dragon, as I actually call it. We called it the Dragon Lads. Um, as a result of uh, something else, but uh, um, my world is called Layoff, and uh, my kind of generic name for, for story is just Heart of the Dragon. Um, and uh, um, the part where Dalgon is trying to get everybody into the water, I, my backup plan was that, especially if they were like overpowering Dalgon or something like that, and Halia, um, was that zombie bugbears would start coming up because um, there were some bugbears killed in the, the previous uh, campaign with F Lost Minds of Fendelver, and I figured, well, there is undead magic here, and so it raised them up, and they're just basically, they're going to get chased into the water somehow. And uh, um, I think that kind of also shows how I wanted to tell a story, and I wanted to give the players as much freedom as I could within that story, 
but really this was a little bit rail railroaded. I think uh, I learned that quite a bit as I went on, even though I kind of thought to myself, no, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's free, free will, you know, I know it's kind of story driven more than sandbox, but, um, those kinds of lessons were the biggest, I think, that I learned, and so you can see from the beginning out, from the outset, I, I gave the players very much illusion of choice, there wasn't a whole lot, the, the gold that they got, um, You'll, you'll find out that they don't get to spend that, really. That was pointless. The, 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 their only motivation to do this was gold, and I took that from them. <laughs> so, uh, maybe not the best decisions. You'll see some of the decisions I made in the, make in the next session that probably weren't the best either. But um, until then, um, that campaign, the, the session one was a ton of fun. Um, love it. Love you guys. Uh, the players who were in this, uh, if you're watching, leave comments, especially. Um, and uh, anybody else who's watching this, make comments too. Yeah, do that. Uh, don't stop. This is our quest.